Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This feels weird. <laughs> Demarcus John just made fun of us. I know it does feel weird. I haven't had a sit down, get ready with me type video in a long time. So hopefully it doesn't take me 10 years to record this. Actually, I've decided I wanna scoot in. I wanna scoot in just a little bit. I don't need that much background. This is about my face. So let's, let's give it some face. I'm gonna be doing my makeup and talking about postpartum. I'm gonna do my edges first. Um, I don't recommend this edge control. It turns white, so that's why I don't recommend it. Um, there are better ones out there, just so you know, but it does lay the edges. It does a good job, it just, it turns white. Besides the point, we're gonna talk about postpartum in this video. Last time I talked to you guys, well, first of all, if you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Vicky. If you haven't seen any of my pregnancy update videos, I did make several videos talking about my pregnancy journey. So like from the beginning all the way up until like maybe a month before I gave birth. Um, no, not even a month. It was like <laughs> two months. I think I was 36 weeks or so when I made that last video. I did a birth video talking about my birth. My husband also did his perspective as well. So if you wanna know the whole story, boom, bam, there you go. Um, I am uploading a birth video like of the actual like day of the birth day that I gave birth. So you guys can see that. That will be on my vlog channel, Life with the Logans. And then also I do want to reiterate that we do have a podcast, my husband and I, we have a podcast called Everything Is We, where we talk about our marriage. If you guys are OGs, you know, we used to do the marriage Q&As every year. Um, we still do them. This year we did it on the podcast first and then I uploaded it to, I syndicated it <laughs> to my main channel later. You've been married for almost 10 years now, which is crazy to say, because a lot of you guys found me from my wedding video. So that's how old I am. I asked on my YouTube channel, like uh, in like the community page or whatever, or like it pops up when you scroll on YouTube for some questions to like answer while I'm doing this, because I wanted to make sure I answered all you guys questions. A lot of y'all asked about stuff that we did talk about on the podcast. So if you're not hip and you haven't been on the podcast or watched the podcast, we do talk a lot about some of those things that y'all have asked. Um, more so like how things are going postpartum with me and Cam, um, like with our relationship and things like that. I'm not really going to do too much of that in this video just because we have kind of talked about it on the pod and if you really want my full like feelings on like our relationship and how marriage has been going, that's all there. Other than that, I am gonna be talking about myself in this video. So yeah, get ready. Hopefully I can get through this without being emotional. Um, there's a lot of things that have happened postpartum that have just like really rocked my world. And well, the birth in general and everything was just like really, I don't wanna say disappointing, but it was kind of like sad for me. So I've been just really trying to heal from the trauma that was birth um, and I'm still processing it. So again, like I said in my birth video, please be gracious, please, you know, just let me express myself and share my thoughts and feelings without trying to make me feel like I should feel differently or give me advice on ways I can feel differently. It is what it is and I'm just taking it one day at a time and that's about it. After birth, um, most of y'all know that I did have to be transferred to a hospital. I had an emergency C-section after being in labor for 26 hours at the birth center that I was at, which was a very big 180 from what I thought I would be doing because I definitely had prepared to give birth naturally. I think postpartum is hard whether you have a c-section or whether you have your baby natural. I don't think it matters. Either way it's hard. It's just a different hard depending on how your birth went. Immediately after giving birth I was girl tired okay <laughs> tired is an understatement i had not slept i'm using a moisturizer this is charlotte tilbury's magic water Cream. the whole birth process was very exhausting to say the least once you give birth your body is like automatically like shifting like you you are your hormones are changing so you're like shaking uncontrollably feel like you're having a seizure and i was on a surgery table too so that made it even worse so Immediately after the birth and going into labor and delivery, I was just really tired. My body was over it, I was done. My belly was still big, but they kept pressing on it. So when you go, you go from having the baby to not having a baby anymore, your uterus has to like contract down to size. Number one, that hurts really bad because you're, you're having contractions, literally. Every time I would breastfeed, I was having contractions. So that was painful. They have to like push out, I guess the extra, I don't know what, the pressing of the actual belly does, but they have to come in every so often 
and press on my belly, which was so painful. It felt horrible. They did it like three times after I had the baby and then like, and every so often in the hospital bed. So I was in the hospital bed. Obviously I couldn't walk because I was numb from the waist down for a while. Um, my feelings started coming back a little bit, but I was on drugs. They gave me medication to help with the pain. I'm, I did not sleep the entire time I was in the hospital because they, they come in and they, they're doing stuff to you for like every other hour. So you don't really get to sleep. Um, every time I would fall asleep, they would, hi hon, come here check in. <laughs> I wanna say it was annoying, but I also appreciate it because like, honestly, like having a hospital experience wasn't as bad as I thought it would be as far as like the nurses being like really nice to me and all of that. Like I wasn't expecting that. They were really nice and really helpful. I loved the lactation consultant that would come in. She was helping me get latched on. Um, so I was able to breastfeed a little bit in the hospital. After the first couple days though, it was difficult. I'm gonna have to make a whole separate video about uh, breastfeeding and that whole journey because most of y'all know I pumped for six months and I was like an overproducer and stuff. So I can talk more about that in a different video because this, this gonna be, this will be too long if I talk about that. Yeah, so I was trying to breastfeed and like just trying not to fall asleep with him in my arms because they also don't want that to happen because that can also be dangerous for the baby, right? So I'm like trying not to fall asleep and Cam is in there with me, obviously he's there. Um, my parents were there. My dad went home after I left the hospital, but um, my mom stayed. But they were there during the day helping out and then Cam's parents would come at night and visit. But Cam slept overnight with me he was up changing diapers and stuff. Obviously, they, the nurses come in every so often too, so they was helping. I didn't have to get up. Like, I didn't have to move. I couldn't move the first, like, three days. I only got up to use the bathroom. And I tried to get up and walk around a little bit, but it was just really difficult. It hurt really bad. I had to hold my insides because they felt like they were going to fall out of my body. The first couple times going to the bathroom wasn't bad at all like I actually didn't have a lot of problem using the bathroom I think that's more so for a thing a thing for people who give birth naturally where it like really burns to pee and stuff some of the things that I have bought for postpartum I didn't really even use because I had a c-section and so I didn't need I didn't need like ice packs and stuff that kind of stuff you need if you give birth naturally I feel like this is just me and I've heard this from other people too when you have a c-section it sometimes for some people can feel like you lost your baby because you didn't complete the birth and your body didn't get the chance to push him out. And so your body reacts to it as if the baby was taken from you and not birthed through you. Cause you didn't, he didn't go through the birth canal and I didn't birth out my placenta. It was removed. When I gave birth, I very distinctly remember feeling him being removed, even though I couldn't feel my body, I could feel him being removed, like an organ was removed from me. When I was in the hospital, I was feeling phantom kicks. Like it, it, it felt like there should be still a baby in there, but there wasn't. And obviously he's out and I see him and I'm able to hold him and stuff. It just, my brain wasn't computing that I'm not pregnant anymore. So it just felt really, it was really weird. I don't even know how to describe it, but in the hospital I was feeling like so weird. Cause like I still felt pregnant. Going home was difficult because number one, I was in pain. Number two, um, my mom came and stayed with me. So she was helping, which I'm grateful for. I'm very grateful for her coming and staying with me. She was kind of like a night nurse, you could say, uh, a night nurse of sorts. But the whole coming home thing was very stressful, <laughs> to say the least. And I'll just put it like this. It's nobody's fault that it was this way. It's just, this is how I felt at the time. Um, when you give birth, you're like, your hormones are going back to normal and everything. So you do have baby blues. Um, that's normal. They say baby blues are normal. It lasts like maybe a week. And then after that, you, you kind of start getting back to normal. If you have baby blues for longer than that, like in like maybe like six weeks or months after, then that's when they screen you for postpartum depression. But that first couple like days and maybe even like a week or so, you're going to feel baby blues. Like that's normal. So I was feeling baby blues and I did not expect it to feel like it did. I was very confused. I was like, why am I crying? I was crying in the car. I cried when I brought him in the house. Then when I came in the house, I needed to breastfeed him. I, I, I had envisioned, I had envisioned like me coming home. I don't know, just having the house ready for him to come home and I come home and we just learn each other. You know what I mean? We just vibe. Um, I just used um, the Blur Jam. This is Glowish Blur Jam by Huda. That is a good primer if you like not mattifying, but like smoothing. It's very smoothing. We like that. But yeah, coming home was weird. It just was like, 
I had this idea of how I wanted to come home and when I got here, people were here. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Like they're trying to help out. Like they want me to eat and like make sure I'm taking care of myself. Somebody had to help me get up the stairs because it was so painful to go up and down stairs. So I could not go up and down stairs for a few days. Um, I did anyway, because I'm hard headed. But this is the um, All Hours Foundation by YSL. And I used two different colors. I used DN1 and DN3. Um, it was just hard because I really wanted to like, again, bond with the baby and just like get to know him and stuff. Me and Cam just kind of like figure things out with nobody else. Cause I'm the kind of person I don't, like people were asking me like, oh, is your mom gonna stay with you for the first month or so? And I'm like, month? No, she's coming to visit. She ended up staying um, the rest of that week. So she stayed for like maybe three days, four days, but she went home after that um, because she could tell that I wanted my time. You know, she knows how I am. Like I'm the type of person I learn on the fly and I don't like people like in my space when I'm trying to learn like I like to learn on my own I like to figure things out on my own get my own groove and I just wasn't able to do that while people were here so even though I love my mom and she's very very helpful she knew she could tell that I was frustrated and then the other thing about it is like I wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do like I wanted to be able to like hold him and pick him up and do certain things they had to bring him to me pretty much because I couldn't walk you need help it's okay to let people help you and I kept hearing people in my head like Vicky let people help you when you're postpartum, especially having a C-section. I wasn't able to move. I had a surgery. You have a major surgery. Yeah, you got to be able to sit down and let people help you, bro. So, I mean, they cut me open <laughs> and took my insides out. Are you kidding? The first couple of days, my mom did help. Again, she was a night nurse for me. So she stayed overnight. Like she would like stay up and make sure he could eat and, and things like that. I would wake up in these like sweats. I was having dreams, sweating. Not that I didn't know he was okay. It's just like I was having flashbacks of the birth. I was like literally having nightmares about them taking him out of my body. Like I was feeling it. I could feel it. It was stressing me out. So some of those nights that I was supposed to be in bed, um, I would get up and literally I was fighting my way up and down the stairs. I also had to wake up every couple hours too to pump. So I wasn't really sleeping anyway because I had to wake up to pump. In the middle of the night pumping, my mom would come get bottles from me. But then uh, eventually I just start going down there and giving them to her because I was like, <laughs> I want to see what he's doing. I want to see, you know, like it's just weird. I have this whole human that I just birthed out and like people have to hold him for me. Like I'm just, I'm weirded out by it. And then during the day, Lex and her mom would be over my mom would be, they would all be downstairs watching the baby for me while I try to take a nap or rest or eat. Cause I'm not supposed to be going up and down the stairs. So I'm upstairs eating in his room, but I'm like, dang, everybody's downstairs with my baby. It just felt weird. So then when people, I would have people like, okay, y'all come upstairs, like, and they'll bring him to me if he needs to try to breastfeed or if like he's hungry or whatever. But then everybody's in there talking to me and they're talking about the birth and like how I'm trying to process everything. It was just a lot. And then I also like, I gotta have my, my titties out, obviously. If there's people over, you can't have your titties out. But I'm like, guys, I need to have my titties out. Yeah, that whole thing was also frustrating. I'm like trying to figure out how do I say I don't want y'all here without saying I don't want help because I did want help. I just got tired of people being around. Like I just wanted to like figure it out for myself, you know? So eventually my mom realized that she's like, okay, yeah, she wants her own time to herself. So she stayed until Saturday to help us out or whatever, help us get our bearings, get set up in the house, make sure we had everything we needed. We did have to go to appointments a lot though. That's the hard part about like <laughs> giving birth is like, dang, like, okay, you just had a baby and they want you to like go home and rest, but also come back in two days so we can have an appointment. Like, ugh. and then I had to go back to the birth center and process what happened at the birth center. Even though I didn't complete the birth there, they still let me come back and finish out my appointments with them. So they did like my one week checkup, two week checkup. You know what, I forget how many days it was between, but yeah. So I ended up doing all my appointments with them, which was nice because they were very helpful. And they also, they also made sure that I was good. So I was able to like talk it out with them and figure out, okay, like, how are you feeling about what happened? Like, we want to know how you're feeling. Are you okay? I'm using one size, the pink powder from one size, the ultra pink. I love this powder. Yeah, so they talked to me about, you know, my mental state and things like that. While my mom was still here, we went to that appointment. We went to one of my appointments. That was cool. She got to go to the birth center and see it, even though I didn't give birth there. Um, and they were really helpful in just like making sure that I was okay, talking to me about postpartum depression, making sure I wasn't having any issues there. Maybe two days after we got home from the hospital. So like maybe five days in, five or six days in, we also met the pediatrician and he got his little checkups 
you know, made sure everything was good. And yeah, so my mom was here for that. So that was really helpful because she was able to like help us get him dressed and ready for the appointments. And after that, she was like, okay, I'm gonna go because you don't need me. <laughs> I did, but I didn't. The next week after that was a little more chill. Me and Xander got some time together to learn each other. It was hard for me to get in and out of bed. So a lot of times I was sleeping in a, the recliner that we bought. Of course, Cam was helping me. Like a lot of the times he was doing night shifts for me, which I greatly appreciate. Listen, if anything I've learned, like get you a man. <laughs> get you a man who's helpful because he was doing night shifts for me a lot of times he was getting up and changing diapers for me getting bottles for me so we ended up like taking turns at that time he was going to sleep around eight o'clock so I was going to his room getting him to sleep he would sleep and I would just sit there with him and then once my turn was up Cam would come in maybe like 1 a.m. or so, switch with me, change his diaper, feed him, whatever. I would go to bed or try to get in the bed, but it was so uncomfortable for me to sleep in the bed to the point where I was just like, I'm, I would rather sleep in the chair. Um, I also was having residual pains. In the hospital, I was having a lot of pain. When you're in the hospital, you have like a lot of gas. A lot of gas so I was very gassy but then once I got home I still was gassy and it's crazy because I had a food train like people gave me a meal train or whatever but like everything was making me gassy so the gas was so painful my feet were really swollen after birth um, and they were still pretty swollen for like the first two weeks my face went down though <laughs> my face came back pretty quick but my feet were really swollen my legs were also really swollen that's from surgery though if you watched the birth video I talked about that lightning that went down my back when they put the epidural in, I felt that lightning for a while. Okay, it was like a back pain that I was having on just my right side. And to this day, my right side of my body is not okay. Like my right knee is acting up. I don't think I bled for a long time though. I think my bleeding was pretty moderate. I was only really bleeding heavily for maybe like a week. And then after that, it was, it was fine. I don't remember doing too much. Now what I will say though, I loved disposable underwear. Freedom Mom disposable underwear was my favorite. I would put the pads in those. So I can talk about all the little stuff that I bought that I really enjoyed. I'll maybe do like a separate video, like a birth favorites video, because there's a lot of things that I really enjoyed in that beginning, not enjoyed, but just really helped me out in that beginning phase of being postpartum. But yeah, the first couple of weeks, there was definitely a lot of sadness and it got even worse <laughs> when my dog had to come home, which, <laughs> is a whole thing in itself. Most of y'all know I had a dog for the majority of me and my husband's marriage. Um, it is very hard for me to talk about this without getting emotional. I'm getting emotional right now, which is why I wanted to wait to make this video because if I had made it any earlier, I probably would not have been able to sit and talk through this. Something happened when I got pregnant um, to where I just really could not be a dog mom. Like it was very hard for me. I was like, really struggling with the idea of bringing a baby home and having my dog there and also having to take care of her. It was like I already had a toddler and I was having another baby. I'm gonna set with the Bobbi Brown. This is the Vitamin Enriched Pressed Powder. And it's like this. It's a pretty good powder. Helps to blend a little bit. I just didn't know how I was gonna do it because I was always, I was always Gigi's primary caregiver. So like, even though Cam was there to help me with her and he's obviously her parent too. And I still talk as if she's mine because she's still in the family so my family has her so we consider her still our dog just we don't take care of her right now um she's just in a different home i like to say she's you know in college a lot of people ask me like oh would you ever get her back i don't know probably not not unless like our family members who are taking care of her aren't able to anymore i'm never gonna say never it's looking like maybe not only because I know in the future I do want to have more children and having another baby with a toddler would be difficult with a dog. So I'm like thinking in future tense, it doesn't sound like it'll happen, but I don't know. But anyways, once she came home, the day that she was going to come home, I start bawling, like crying so hard because I'm like, we were getting a routine together, me and Cam. It had been like maybe two weeks since I gave birth that she came home. We're figuring it out and I'm like, man, like I don't want her here while I'm doing this because if you don't know much about Gigi, she was stressful, okay? She has anxiety, she's high maintenance dog, she has allergies, very frantic. She also is very needy and very like, 
has separation anxiety type thing. Like if you leave her in a room by herself, she'll go crazy, start barking, like crying. She would sympathy pee and poop. So like sometimes if she felt rejected or felt like they left me, she would poop or pee in the house. Um, so there was a lot of times where she was doing that, especially with me being pregnant and like Cam would leave the house. It was hard to take care of her while I was pregnant. So I knew it would be hard with a baby. So it was going to be difficult. I knew that. I, I knew that it would be difficult. I thought, you know, we can press through it. I feel like we can press through it. But it proved itself to be difficult once she came home. Again, I was still like, still in my emotions, still having baby blues, still just like everything is going wrong. Nothing feels right. I don't want to make the wrong decisions. I don't want to do things wrong. Like I just was still very much in my feelings, very emotional. Um, so that set me off. Like I was like, no, I don't want her here. I don't want her here. Like, and I felt bad for feeling that way because I'm like, this is my dog. Like, why am I thinking this way about my dog? But I'm like, I don't want her here. I don't want her stressing me out. I don't want her barking in the middle of the night. What if she starts barking and wakes the baby up? What if she, you know what I mean? Like I was thinking about all these things. So then once she came home, every night was stressful because anytime I would get up to have to go get the baby or like switch night shifts with Cam, she would see me getting up and she would like want to know what's going on. And like we had been she sleeps in a crate at night but then once the baby came she felt like okay what's going on I want to see what's going on y'all are up why are y'all up why are y'all walking around so then she would hear us shuffling then she would start like freaking out in the crate because she wants to get out but if we let her out and just let her roam around she might pee so it was just like ugh. I felt guilty because I felt like I failed my dog. Um, I felt like we weren't doing a good job as parents. I felt like she was being neglected. I felt like she wasn't getting enough time to hang out. We also didn't want to have to like take her to daycare, pick her up and all that stuff too. Like I forgot to put blush on. This is the Dior blush, by the way. I'm not good at this, man. I gotta get back on my get ready with me game. But yeah, so we already sent her. She'd already been with family for a while while we were, you know, getting set up with the baby at home. And then after that, when she got home, it was like, okay, y'all, this y'all dog. We're not going to have y'all dog every day. So I just felt bad because she didn't have enough to get enough attention that I felt like she deserved. Like, I just really felt like she was not getting enough attention. She wasn't getting the activity that she needed. She needed to be walked. She needed to be. And obviously, yes, you can do these things with a baby. It shouldn't be difficult. <laughs> it was for us because I had I just had surgery. But even after that, even after I started feeling a little bit better, things were not getting better for me. I didn't really make the decision until my aunt offered to take her. She was like, you know, my aunt has two adopted daughters and um, she really wanted them to have a dog. They'd never had a dog before. So um, they were like, oh, we'll help you. We'll take her, whatever. She's in Texas though. So I'm like, okay, if you come get her, you can have her because she's really stressing me out. Me and Cam were both like, okay, this is really stressful. We both decided like, yeah, it's probably best that she has a home where she's like really being like babied because she needs to be babied. But once we decided, we didn't think that it would be that hard until it was the night before we went on a date night. And um, let me find a lip first. What lip am I wearing? I kind of been wanting to do like a red lip, like a red, a red, like glossy lip. Let me see. Let's see what we got in the lip department. So this is what? Brick? Brick? By Mac we'll see how this does so yeah we weren't really sad about letting her go for real for real until we went on a date the night before and we cried in Mercadito <laughs> we were having tacos and crying at the same time um like man I can't believe I can't believe we're letting our dog go you know and it wasn't like we were like putting her down or anything but we had had her for so long that it felt surreal to be rehoming her. But I also knew at the same time that it, I wouldn't have been able to continue. I don't know, like it didn't feel like a bad decision until the day of I was getting ready to take her to the airport. And I remember that whole day I was like pumping, taking care of Xander and crying the whole day. Just she would run in the room and I would just start bawling. <laughs> It was a really hard decision. I feel like it still doesn't feel real. Like every now and then I, I still hear her. Like I'm having phantom uh, dog barking every time the doorbell rings, every time I see a dog on TV. Like I get sad. I shed a little thug tear. And this is Elf. Um, 
Red Delicious. This is their Glow Lip Oil. I'm going to try this as a gloss. I don't think it'll give the same effect that I want, but we'll see. So yeah, that whole thing is just hard in general. It was just really difficult um, to process, really difficult to cope with. I think uh, I cried. I still cry about it every now and then when I think about it. I still cry. It's difficult. Like Cam misses her. I miss her. But at the same time, we know that as a family, we're doing a lot better without her. And people don't talk about that, I feel like. They don't talk about how hard it is to have a needy pet, a very vocal needy pet, and also at the same time, a newborn. While again, I'm grateful that we have family that was able to take her and just, you know, help us out with that, it's still really, really sad. I think about it a lot and I, I oftentimes I'm like, did I make the right decision? And I feel like with everything since giving birth, it's been momguilt.com like especially with how the birth went and how I feel like I wasn't able to do what I really wanted to do as far as giving birth goes it feels like dang like did I make the right decisions did I especially with like doing the castor oil thing and not deciding to go get induced first you know what I mean like even with that even with the birth center choosing the birth center choosing every choice that I had to make during pregnancy and after I feel like was it was my decision, but it was hard to make those decisions. And every time I think about them, I'm like, did I make the right choice? Sometimes I feel like I do. Sometimes I feel like I didn't. Just there's so many different things. There's so many different things that I feel that way about. And it all compounds. And sometimes I get really emotional about it. Still to this day, like I get really emotional about because number one, postpartum, your hormones are doing a thousand things. I gotta make sure I'm taking care of myself and also take care of a baby at the same time and also maintain my relationships and also maintain my business and also like, it's just a lot. And being an adult on top of that, like life still happens outside of that too. Like people are getting sick, people are dying, people are in the hospital. Like you don't get a break, okay? Just because you got a baby. So all of that being said, like making decisions becomes very difficult because it's like, I wanna make sure every decision I make is a smart one, is a good one. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've never done this before. So I'm literally guessing like all the time, obviously praying about all my decisions, but also guessing. And then on top of that, still feeling disconnected from my birth experience because you know, like my body was numb when I gave birth. So like, I didn't really feel like I gave birth. The whole maybe first week, I would just cry because I'm like, I didn't give birth. They took him out of me. I did not do that. Like I did all of the labor. I did all of that hard work while I was preparing to get, preparing to have this baby. And none of it mattered because I ended up on a table, numb from the waist down. That to me was such a letdown. I think now I have a little bit more grace for myself and I'm like, okay, like this was still very much birth and I still went through the process. So it's not like it didn't happen. I feel like my brain and my body processed it as a loss, not just me emotionally, but like physically my body processed it as a loss. And so my brain then started to process it as failure. It's not but that's how I felt and I can't change how I felt. And every now and then I have those feelings and I kind of have to like pray against it and be like, no, that's not true. A win is a win. <laughs> you have a healthy baby. It could have went worse. It definitely could have went way worse. But at the same time, I have to be very real about what my body felt and what my mind was feeling at the time. I, I am much better now, I think, but in the beginning, maybe like the first couple months, I was not okay. And even like looking at my incision and feeling my incision and making sure like I'm, I'm mobilizing it. I'm like looking at my body and I'm like, I can't believe that that happened. Like, especially because I had never had surgery before. I'd never been in a hospital bed before. I'd never had an IV before. Like all of that was so new to me that because it was like, it wasn't even like a premeditated thing. Like I didn't plan on doing it. I think that made it even worse. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to like really like mentally prepare for that and it still is difficult even now when I look at my incision I'm like wow I can't believe that happened I don't cry about it but it still brings up feelings for sure and then there's also the whole pumping thing that also makes that is a part of that like a lot of those emotions came from me actually pumping I talked about it in a post that I made on Instagram but I dealt with dysphoric milk ejection reflex which is basically like when you eject milk 
I would have negative emotions. Like I would be like feeling depressed, feeling anxious, lump in throat, all kinds of things. Like not having a panic attack, but like just feeling like I'm about to um, for maybe like a couple minutes and then it would go away. So like a lot of times when I would be pumping, I would be like highly, highly emotional and I would just start crying. So you can imagine like me pumping and I'm about to get rid of my dog was <laughs> probably the most traumatic thing that happened because I'm like pumping all day. Like I pump six times a day. My dog is walking around looking at me like, oh, hi. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to get rid of you. Anytime, anytime anything was going on, if I was pumping, I would be emotional. Yeah. And then I ended up getting my period back like three months in. So that also made it difficult because I'm like literally getting my period and T in tears pumping at the same time so there's so much more to that the engorgement the oversupply the clogs all of that was so much those first couple months maybe the first three months were very difficult because just all the emotions that come with it feeling like I didn't do my best feeling like I'm making the wrong decisions feeling like things aren't going the way I want them to go still trying to have relationships with people and that's kind of hard because when you're postpartum people don't talk about how you just start disliking it. friends family people I have to see at church all that kind of stuff there there are reasons but they're like so the reasons that wouldn't matter if I hadn't just given birth um I think being a mom changes your perspective on things and so sometimes things can trigger you Things people say can trigger you. Things people do can trigger you. And so I didn't realize that would be such a big deal until I had a baby. And then I was like, I don't like some people. And um, that's just that on that. And it's a little difficult because it's like, especially with people that you have to see all the time or people that you have to be in contact with, it's like... I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's just difficult to navigate. So I found myself really angry a lot too. Um, early postpartum, like wanting to fight everybody. There's something to be said about those first couple months. If you go back to work, I commend you because I was such a hot mess those first couple months. I'm still not amazing. I'm still, you know, a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do another coat of mascara. This was the Fenty mascara, by the way. Love this mascara. It's such a good mascara. It's, I think it's the hella thick. Yeah, hella thick volumizing. I love this mascara. I do two coats and it's just amazing. But yeah, like the first couple months was definitely different than the coming months after that. So that's why I kind of wanted to break this up and like talk about just the beginning because it was hard. Like what I will say is I really am proud of myself um, for how I handled a lot of situations in the first couple months because I definitely was not myself, but I think I did my best. In this video, I, I really want to just focus on me and how I felt postpartum, but let's be clear. My baby's amazing. He didn't cry a lot at all. He was very easygoing, very chill. He still is. He's a very chill, very easygoing baby. He slept really well, despite people saying I wasn't gonna get any sleep. I didn't get a lot of sleep, but it was mostly just because I was dealing with trauma and having nightmares and my body was still healing so I couldn't get up and out of bed so I was struggling with that it was uncomfortable that all was me okay he was chill the boy was asleep okay so the the sleeping part the not being able to sleep part really didn't have much to do with him it was more just mostly me and my crazy self but um I have more to say I also will do a video about like the products that I use and things that were really helpful in dealing with postpartum and um breastfeeding for sure and I also got a lot of help with that too and I feel like I can give you guys a little bit of insight on ways that you can make your breastfeeding journey a little bit better but I really just wanted to come here and let you guys know that I'm doing great I feel like I'm doing really well I'm seven months almost eight months postpartum now getting my body back together okay um yeah looking back I'm proud of postpartum me and we're just getting better with the time. Time is slipping away, but we're getting better. All right, so I gotta go. I'm going to a birthday dinner tonight, so I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you soon.